This is the 2024 Lexus GX 550 Overtrail. Today we're here in central Washington for an overland adventure as we go along this wagon road built in the 1800s. Can this GX live up to its name? We're going to find out right now on Driving Sports TV. Welcome to Old Dur Road, just outside Ellensburg, Washington. Built in 1882 as a wagon trail, these days it's best known as part of the Washington BDR, or Backcountry Discovery Route. BDR trails allow you to cross entire states on mostly roads like this. They are a great way to see remote parts of the country. And in fact, if I go this way, I will eventually get to Canada. And if I go this way, I will eventually get to Mexico, almost completely on dirt roads and rough trails. But today, I'm not going to Canada or Mexico. I have a much shorter adventure in mind. And instead of a wagon, I'm going to be driving something a little bit more luxurious. This is the 2024 Lexus GX 550 Overtrail. Based on the global Land Cruiser Prado, it's a luxury body-on-frame SUV designed for adventure. Under the hood is a 3.4-liter twin-turbo V6 engine. This produces a peak 349 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to a 10-speed automatic transmission with a Torsen-based full-time four-wheel drive system. EPA rates economy at 17 miles to the gallon in town and 21 on the highway. Towing capacity is just over 9,000 pounds. The overtrail here comes standard with extra underbody protection, recovery points, both a mid and rear locker, plus the multi-terrain select and crawl control systems. It also has the Kinetic Dynamic Suspension System, or EKDSS, in addition to 18-inch alloy wheels wrapped in 33-inch Toyo Open Country All-Terrain Tires. Ground clearance is a decent, but not fantastic, 8.9 inches. The overtrail trim starts at $69,250 US dollars, including destination. If you want to get extra fancy, you can move up to the Overtrail Plus, which adds massage seats, a kick sensor in the back, and a parking assist function for an extra $8,000. And we actually did drive the Overtrail Plus down in Arizona. You can find that review here on YouTube. But I think for the money, I prefer the standard Overtrail. It's just a better value. Inside, this Overtrail is well equipped with leather seats that are heated and cooled, a large 14-inch touchscreen display, a digital gauge cluster, sunroof, plenty of room for adults in the second row, and a cargo area big enough to carry all the gear you need. Because it's winter and the days are short, our adventure today is going to take us from here to the communication towers up there. This is an adventure we've done before with several other crossovers and SUVs, and we did it with both the first and second generation GX, as well as the RAV4 TRD Off-Road just recently. So it will be interesting to see how this one compares. One thing I really like about this vehicle is the fact that visibility is king. I can look over that hood. It feels narrow. It feels like I can see everything. This really low cut window, this high seating position, the fact that they even took the infotainment system and pushed it down so it's not blocking any of my visibility. That's all just really, really good. Let's head on out. This, of course, comes with all-terrain tires. They're Toyo Open Countries. They're not very aggressive. They're pretty mild all-terrain, but they are better than a straight trail tire, I think, just looking at the grooves. However, these are not mud tires, and there's a very good possibility that we will be encountering mud today. And in the event of mud, it's going to get slippery real quick, so we're going to have to be careful. For those of you who watch the show regularly, you know that I have a Land Cruiser on order. And this is essentially the US Land Cruiser, but with one major difference. And that's the fact that this has a twin turbocharged V6, whereas the Land Cruiser has a turbo four with a hybrid powertrain. So it's very different. Uh, now in terms of economy, this setup isn't great. It produces a lot of power, but at a cost, I'm averaging around 16 miles to the gallon in combined driving, and that is not great by modern standards. 
However, you do get a lot of power and you do get a 9,000 and I think 9,096 pound towing capacity with this thing. That's massive. Oh, and we have ruts. Yeah, as soon as I saw these ruts, I started calculating in my head how much ground clearance we have. With only 8.9 inches, we certainly cannot straddle <laughs> that line down the middle. We need to actually put our wheels on the crowns. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the right and do that. Luckily, it's not muddy right now on the crowns, so we're not gonna slip into the grooves. On we go. Of course, it does look like those towers are just like a minute away. But the fact is we have to zigzag down into a ravine, back up again, and then go all over those mountains before we actually get there. The overall trip should take about one to two hours, depending on how difficult conditions are. Let's talk more about KDSS while we're on this easy part of the trail. Uh, the system was developed in Australia years ago, and it uses hydraulics to allow for greater articulation off-road, yet it limits articulation when you're on pavement. It's a great system for kind of creating a vehicle that has capabilities in both worlds. And I think we're really going to see just how much articulation this thing has a little bit later on the trail. Can you imagine what it was like to actually take a wagon on this trail? Everybody must have had headaches all the time because this is not smooth. However, KDSS and the suspension on this vehicle is doing a great job of soaking up all the bumps. Roads like this aren't particularly difficult. However, one thing you gotta keep in mind is that some vehicles, specifically uh, unibody vehicles, all of these little vibrations get channeled throughout the entire vehicle. And it actually builds up fatigue over the years, which then you know makes for vehicles that squeak and wobble. Also, it transmits it to the driver a little bit more. This is a body on frame, which means that there's a body physically on a ladder frame. And it's on that frame, which actually takes all of the abuse here. It doesn't channel all of it into the cabin. So it makes for a vehicle that in theory should have greater longevity uh, against squeaks, rattles, and other chassis issues. And that is why according to Lexus, they went with a body on frame design for this vehicle. Okay, I love this part couple feet this way and we're falling. I also have to keep an eye open for large boulders because uh, they're constantly falling off the hills. Okay, here's the first viewpoint. Let's check it out. Oh yeah. So right here you can see where we're going to be climbing up out of this gorge. But first we're going to take a lunch stop at the bottom. I've talked about this ridge in the past, but for those who aren't aware, this actually used to have turnstiles on each corner to allow for wagons to make the corners. This was actually a paid uh, route uh, back in the 1800s when it was built. Mr. Durr, very enterprising individual. Unfortunately, yeah, it wasn't a success. It was too expensive and farmers were more than willing to take the longer route near Yakima. This particular GX does have a few options. Uh, I think one of the most important is the cool box. Yes, it is actually an air conditioned storage unit. And it's amazing. The previous GX had a swing out door and that was actually pretty good if you wanted to mount a tire on the back. Uh, this one, it just goes up. But living in the Pacific Northwest, I actually prefer the up uh, because it provides shelter when it's inevitably raining or snowing. <clears throat> oh, well, this day doesn't suck. Okay, 
it with lunch done, it's time to continue the adventure. See if we can make it all the way to the top before the sun sets. Oh, it is so slippery here. Might cause problems further along the trail. So far, you probably noticed I haven't used any special drive modes. Well, because simply they haven't been needed. Uh, modes, features, all this kind of stuff is really just for when you actually need it. So if you're unsure, just keep it as it is. And if you start to slip or if you need some extra traction, then dive into the features. This is where we have to definitely watch for large boulders. The big one right there on the right. Let's go ahead and start along the left. I'm going to go ahead and remove that boulder. So when I come back tonight, I don't run into it. Trail improvement. Tuck it right there. Onward. Okay, so right up here, we're gonna have our first real challenge. It's a cross cut. And usually I use it to test out different drive modes. But I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. Oh yeah, this is gonna be perfect. Because the new KDSS system is electronic, it's tied into the various drive modes. So I'm really curious, do the different drive modes actually modify the amount of articulation in the vehicle? Or is it just so subtle that you're not gonna see it? This feature on the road, we've taken lots of CUVs over and it always lifts a wheel. So I think it's gonna be interesting to see if we can get this vehicle to lift any wheels uh, with more conservative KDSS settings. Now we don't change KDSS by itself. Uh, they're tied into the drive modes. So I'm gonna try various drive modes and see what we got. So I'm just in regular drive mode and I'm gonna climb over this and see what it does. I have no MTS mode on. I'm just in normal drive mode. Let's see what it does. Will it give us enough articulation to reach that rear wheel all the way down or do we pick it up? Feels like we have enough articulation. Yep, easy. Just for comparison to sake, to see if it's something that maybe I can't feel, but it's visual, uh, I'm gonna back down again, and I'm gonna do the most extreme other way. I'm gonna go to neutral, I'm gonna put it in four low, I'm gonna turn on MTS, and I'm gonna turn MTS to rock mode. So that should have the most articulation. If it affects articulation in terms of stroke, it might just be in how quick it responds. I don't know. But here we are, rolling up and over. Is there any difference on the outside? What do you think? And up we go. I can see the towers as though they're almost right there, but they're actually still pretty far away. You know, this suspension feels amazing on these trails. It is soaking up all of the irregularities, but I can still feel what's going on with the wheels. It is really just like a perfect setup. It kind of almost makes me wish I got this instead of my Land Cruiser, because the Land Cruiser doesn't have EKDSS. Uh, well, hopefully, hopefully the Land Cruiser setup is still good. I expect it will be. And here we are up on the ridge line. Gotta watch for ridges, gotta watch for rocks. Mud isn't too bad though. It's, uh, it's a little tacky, which is good. Might be a walk in the park today. This thing is just so nice. It's quiet, it's comfortable. I have both heated and cooled seats. Actually, I turn off the heated seats. That sun is baking me now. Actually, let's turn on cooled seats. Yeah, turn off the heat, bring on the cool. Oh, that's a big ditch. Watch for that. 
And that's really, I think, the important thing to note here is you really got to keep your wits about you to make sure that you're always paying attention to what's on the road uh, because you know you kind of glance off or look here and there for a few moments you're going to hit a rock or a big ditch don't want to do that so i'm going to go up on the crown here because i don't want to bottom out even though this has underbody protection let's not put that to the test <laughs> Okay, I think that was the hardest part of this upper section. Uh, wasn't bad today. Other days, just don't know. <laughs> the mud may not be too bad, but it is slippery and these tires are all loaded up. So I have to be really careful here. Oh, yep, see, good example, yikes. Oh yeah, slippering. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and lock my center diff, my torsen, so that we're evenly pushing power front to back, or back to front. Okay, here we go. Oh man, this is slippery. Oh man, this stuff is getting really slick and my tires are all loaded up. So we're just gonna take it slow. <laughs> oh man, I know this kind of clay. This is the kind of stuff we have at our mountain test course and it is unforgiving. It just clumps to everything and won't let go. Of course, in the process, it also takes away all your traction. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna need to do some wheel spin today, that's for sure. Yikes. <laughs> of course, I also have to be extra careful because the road does kind of drop off on the quarters. Okay, given all this slip here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and change to MTS mud. So I do get some wheel spin here. That'll help clear the lugs and give me some additional grip, what little I can get. <laughs> okay, here we go. This, this looks a little easier here. I think it's interesting because I look at the road here and it doesn't look that wet, but it's just moist enough to give it that greasy viscosity, which is really tough to drive through. Okay, here we go. I guess on the upside, we don't have any snow yet. Although I kind of was hoping I'd get some snow. It's challenging, but it's fun. Oh man, this is slippery and rocky. Good, now we have ruts too. We got everything here. We got this. Just a little snow as we're getting to the last corner. Oh wait, we're not at the last corner. We still have another couple bends. Right. Whoop, crabbing there. Watch for that. Just keeping momentum. Four high. MTS mud. All is good. Corner. Oh yeah. The final run. Watch for rocks. I haven't aired down and these are not ELO tires. So I have to be careful hitting anything too quick, like any of the sharp rocks, because it definitely can cause a puncture. But luckily we do have the full size spare in the back. Here we go. I think we're gonna make it. Keep momentum. <laughs> okay, I think we are home free now. Just need to make it all the way to the top. But usually that last run is rocky, but not terribly difficult. Because uh, really the trickiest thing today is this mud. Oh look, snow. Now I do want to point out that these tires are peak rated for snow. So uh, that's good. Gives you a little bit of extra traction in snowy conditions. Obviously, it doesn't replace a proper snow tire. Uh, but if you want something that, you know, is good in a pinch, 
all terrains with the peak rating are pretty good. So this final road is, as you can tell, very rocky. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I don't really have to do this, but switch into four low. I still have my center locked. And uh, let's do MTS rock. Basically, we'll make sure that I don't spin wheels because we don't really wanna be kicking up these boulders and damaging the bodywork. And then we'll just slowly crawl, as slow as we can go. And that front camera's great. This is where the articulation is good because it's keeping the wheels on the ground. And then that MTS system, uh, the rock mode, is preventing the wheels from basically kicking up rocks at all. Very nice setup. And of course, we're in four low, so we can just crawl at two miles per hour. Easy. This is a really nice setup. And here we are up the final climb. I think we made it. Comparing this to the RAV4 TRD off-road I did the same trip with a few weeks ago, I am way more relaxed today than I was after doing it in the uh, RAV4. The RAV4 just basically absorbs all of the vibration and transmits it to the driver. This one, yeah, I'm not getting any of that. Then we reconnect onto the main road. Final climb. Actually, right here, we could test out the crawl control system. Let's do it. We made it this far without it. So for crawl control, I do have to be in four low, which I already am. I'm gonna go ahead, hit DAC crawl and then I can use the knob to basically change my drive speed. And it will we'll do everything for me. All I have to do is steer, which is really nice. It also uses very aggressive brake vectoring to shift power left to right to the front wheels and the back wheels, unless I turn on that rear diff lock, in which case the two wheels just move together as one. I can also turn up the speed. So it seems like in this condition, high is around three miles per hour and uh, everything under two is less than one mile per hour so super slow okay we don't really need this so i'm going to go and just switch it back to mts and continue the climb we don't get many days like this in the uh winter time that's for sure but spring is just around the corner So that is the 2024 Lexus GX 550 Overtrail Edition. Comparing this versus the previous generation GX, you can definitely see that Lexus understood what its buyers wanted. They wanted something that could, out of the box, go off-road and have a lot of fun, with a lot of capability. The old GX was definitely very capable. It had many of the same features as this vehicle in terms of MTS crawl and four low, four high. However, it didn't have very good approach angles. And if you can't drive over something, well, all the features in the world aren't gonna help you. So of course, in the aftermarket, people modified the noses of their GXs to be able to make them more off-road capable. Here, Lexus has produced a factory package that fulfills all those needs. Now, comparing this versus something more pedestrian, like the Toyota RAV4 TRD Off-Road, obviously not the same pricing categories, but we just did the same adventure. That being a unibody crossover, it was a lot more exhausting to take this trail. And it's not just about suspension, it's about how all the vibrations are transmitted throughout the cabin. This being a body on frame, it's the frame that takes the brunt of the impacts, which is great. Not only does it make it more comfortable to drive, it also increases durability. Going from the RAV4, let's compare this versus the higher end LX600. Well, the LX is a proper Land Cruiser. It is the big global Land Cruiser wearing a Lexus suit. And overall, I very much prefer this over the LX600. Finally, I wanna bring it back to the Land Cruiser that I have on order, the first edition. And the first edition costs about $77,000. So it actually costs about $8,000 more than this. If I were to do it again, and if the Land Cruiser didn't actually have the Land Cruiser name attached to it, would I buy that or would I buy this? I'd probably get this. This Overtrail Edition is very nicely equipped for the money. It has everything you need and nothing you don't. The biggest change I would make are these running boards. I would change them to sliders. But other than that, I think that, wow, 
Lexus really knocked it out of the park. This is a great vehicle. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. We make them for you. I hope you enjoy them.